Hello everyone, welcome back to Electrified Outdoors. Today we're gonna have a little bit different video for you. This video is gonna be all about planning road trips. Now we're just getting into spring here, it's April 1st, and a lot of you are gonna be planning your spring, summer, and fall road trips. So I figured this is really a good time to get into how we plan our road trips and all the different options you have to make sure you have as much of a stress-free road tripping experience in your EV as possible. So let's get into it. Okay, everyone. So this is going to be the quick and dirty way to plan your road trip. Now, I do recommend you use ABRP if you're taking a longer trip with multiple charging stops for the most stress-free experience possible. So at the bottom of our screen in the center, we see this circle with an arrow and we're going to tap that. And then we're going to tap where it says new trip here at the bottom. And the first thing we're going to do is set our trip preferences. So we're going to tap in the upper right hand corner, these two lines with small circles through them. And the first thing we're going to do in here is select our departure time. And I'm going to select Saturday, April 6th, and we'll say 8.07 AM. Next, we're going to select our preferred charging networks. And I'm going to select Rivian, EVgo, and Tesla. Now this last option down here is important. It's turned on by default and it says avoid sites that need an adapter. So it will not route you to Tesla superchargers that need the NAX to CCS1 adapter. I'm gonna turn that off because I do have the adapter. So I'm gonna say done. And next is our preferred arrival range. Now the default is gonna be 20%, but I'm gonna set this down to 10%. This means that it's going to give me a 10% buffer. So it'll plan it so that I arrive at each charger with at least 10% charge left. If you're concerned about chargers, you can set it to 20%, but it will require you to stop the charge more often. The last thing is going to be our drive mode. Now I have a quad motor, so I have conserve mode, and that's typically what I use on road trips. Now, if you have a dual motor and you can select all purpose because all purpose in the dual motor will automatically disable the rear motor for maximum efficiency. But since we have a quad, we're going to say conserve and done. And we're going to say apply. And we're leaving for Mount Airy, Maryland. So the next thing we're going to do is select our destination. And I'm just going to say Walt Disney World. in Florida you can see that's about an 800 mile trip and we can even add additional stops and so let's say we're going to stop at south of the border okay and we'll move that up if that's on the way and then once we have everything in here the way we want it we're going to tap plan trip Now, as you can see, it's mapped out all of our charging stops and it has eight charging stops there. And if we swipe up here a little bit, we can see how long we're going to need to charge at each stop. And it does tell us that an adapter will be needed. These are Tesla superchargers. So very useful here. And swipe down a little bit here and lastly we can see the total distance of our trip total amount of time and when it predicts that we will arrive and there's a couple of different things we can do from here we can edit we can save this and we can also send it to the vehicle very easily from here so this is the Rivian app and how to plan a quick trip in here. Next, we'll get into ABRP and all the awesome functions that it has. And here on a better route finder, we're gonna select our vehicle. That's the first thing we're gonna do. And in our case, we have a Rivian and we're gonna select the R1T. We do have a quad motor with the large battery pack and we have the 21 inch road wheels. And we're gonna start our trip from Mount Airy, Maryland. Now, I would typically put in my actual address, but I'm not going to do that here. I'm just going to put in the city 
And we're going to end our trip at Walt Disney in Orlando, Florida. And the next thing we're going to do is select our starting state of charge. Now it's got 90% selected for us, but I'm going to charge it all the way to 100%. I don't do that every day. That's definitely not good for the battery. However, when I'm going on a long road trip like this, I am going to start out with 100%. Now we can select some different options here along the bottom. If we want fewer but longer charging stops, by default it's going to give us the quickest arrival time. And then of course we can slide it over this way and it'll give us short charging stops but more charging stops. I'm going to leave this at the default. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to click up here on this A Better Route Planner icon up here. And when I do that, you'll notice I get all these extra options here on the right hand side. Now, the first thing I'm going to go down and do is select the user interface settings. And I'm going to change my currency code to US dollars. And we're going to change our units to Imperial. And I'm going to change it to miles per kilowatt hour. That's, that's what I like. That's what works for me. You may like watt hours per mile. You can certainly select that if that works better for you. So now that we have that selected, we can see that we have a reference consumption. This is at 65 miles per hour. Now, again, folks, this is getting really, really deep into planning a trip. You don't necessarily need to get this deep. But further on in this video, when I start talking about planning a road trip when towing, you're going to see why a lot of these settings are going to come in handy. Now I'm going to leave the reference consumption here at the default. We can add a card. Now charging networks is going to be important. Now there is a premium version of ABRP. We have the free version. In order to use some of these features, you will need the premium version. At the time of this recording, that's $5 per month. Now, if you want to sign up for a premium, go ahead and use the link in the video description. It'll help out our channel. And while you're down there, make sure you hit that like button. But we're going to select this option here to avoid and prefer. And when I go in here, I can choose chargers to either prefer or avoid. I don't like Electrify America, so I can type that in. And you see down here, I can give it a thumbs down and that'll put it under networks to avoid. If I put in Tesla, I can give that thumbs up. That makes it a preferred network. And we'll put in EVgo, and I'll also put in Rivian. Now, if you're putting in Rivian, make sure you select the Adventure Network. The Waypoint Network is level two charging. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is go down to my battery. And my arrival state of charge and charger arrival state of charge are both at 10%. This is good. I'm going to leave that there. The maximum state of charge for charging. Now, this is the maximum that ABRP will charge me up to. I want to set that to 80%. I don't want to be at a charger charging above 80%. And then you have charging overhead. This is the amount of time it will take you to set up the charging session and that kind of thing. I leave that at the default, which is five minutes. Now, speed. So in here, we do have some premium features. We can enable real-time traffic. Maximum speed is set to 93 miles per hour. Now, a lot of times, if I want to be conservative, I might bump this up to 115%. That'll give me a more conservative estimate on ABRP. But for now, we're just going to leave this on 100%. On vehicle settings, battery degradation, 5%. That's the default. Initial vehicle temperature. So if you're heating the vehicle up, I mean, you can see how powerful this tool really is for planning road trips. And extra weight. So if you've got your vehicle loaded down, you're on an adventure road trip and you've got it loaded down, you can put the extra weight in here and ABRP will take that into consideration. So this is a very, very powerful interface here. And you can go through all the different options. You can even save plans. 
So if you're like me, what I'll typically do is come in here as time allows, plan out my trip, and then when I'm actually ready to go, I'll pull up the plans and route everything right then and there. That way I've already got everything planned. If you're gonna do that, you'll need to have a login. Login is free, you don't need to buy premium to create a login. But for now, we're gonna go ahead and accept these options. And I'm gonna select plan. Plan our trip out, it looks like five charging stops. And it tells us when we're going to arrive and we'll have 10% when we get there. So a very, very detailed way to plan out your trip and also create your plans and then save them. So right now I'm on a desktop, but if I have the ABRP app on my mobile device, I can then pull up those plans on my mobile device and I can tap drive and it'll actually route me and navigate me to the chargers and everything like that, tell us how long we need to charge up. I highly recommend ABRP, especially if you're going on a long road trip and you're gonna to need to stop more than once or twice to charge your vehicle. Now, the next thing we're going to talk about is towing. And as everyone knows, range is significantly reduced when you're towing anything with an EV. In our case, I'm going to use the numbers from my travel trailer. This is kind of a worst case scenario. So when I'm towing a travel trailer with my Rivian R1T, I get between 1 and 1.2 miles per kilowatt hour. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select restart on my trip to Disney World here. I'm going to put in a different destination. I'm going to put in something a little bit closer. So here we go. Let's try Yogi Bear's Jellystone Park Campground in Nashville, Tennessee. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here back on the A Better Route Planner icon. And under the reference consumption, I'm going to change this. And I'm going to change this to one mile per kilowatt hour. And this is what I've done anytime I'm towing with my vehicle. And it really, really works well for planning out my trips. So I know exactly how far I can go and what to expect when I'm on this road trip. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. And I'm going to go ahead and click plan. And here you can see it's planned everything out for me. Now, since I lowered the efficiency, it's got me stopping a lot more. Now you could go further than what it's showing here, but remember, I'm limiting it to only charging to 80%. I don't wanna charge the vehicle above 80% because it's gonna be really slow and it's gonna consume a lot more time. So it's got me going between 60 and it looks like 80 miles in between charging stops. Now, I could bump that up to 90% and it would probably save me one charging stop. But as you can see, this is going to be a long trip. And the other nice thing about ABRP that I forgot to mention before is it breaks your trip down. It tells you how long you're going to be driving and how long you're going to be charging. And as you can see, it's not really too practical to tow long distances with an EV. You can see that I'm going to spend four hours and 38 minutes charging and I'm gonna have nine charging stops. But this is a very useful tool if you're thinking about towing on a longer distance with your EV as to whether or not you wanna attempt it or not. Now my wife and I have discussed this several times and we feel you shouldn't really try to tow with the EV more than 500 miles. It starts to get really impractical really fast. But if you have unlimited amounts of time and you want to go for the adventure, you can certainly do it but you just need to stop and do a lot of charging. And it's not really going to save you any money using the EV. In some cases, it may actually wind up being a little more expensive than using a traditional ICE truck to tow the camper. But as you can see, this is going to give us all the information we need to know about our efficiency and what our trip is going to look like if we're towing a travel trailer with our EV. Now, the last part of this video and it mostly pertains to towing, but if you're taking the family on a road trip, it also applies in that situation. And I like to research some of the chargers along the route. There's two reasons I like to do that. For one, I like to find out if there's going to have amenities such as food, restrooms, and that sort of thing. The other thing I like to do, especially if I'm towing, 
is to figure out how many stalls there are going to be and whether or not I'm going to be able to get the trailer in there without unhitching it. Now the site I'm going to use is called PlugShare. So I'm just going to type in here Electrify America Richmond VA. And there we go. And here we can see the charging station. And if I select this charging station, over here on the left, it shows me the address and gives me a lot of information about the charger, what type of plugs that has, the speeds, how many stations there are. And here's the nice thing, I can see the check-ins. So this is folks that have actually gone to the charger and used it. And this is very useful. I can see what kind of speeds they got. So we can see this, this gentleman on March 31st was getting 70 kilowatts. Another gentleman today was getting 185 kilowatts. So that tells me the charger is working properly. They're getting good speeds. If you see a lot of slow speeds in there or a lot of people complaining, then you may want to avoid that charger. The next thing I can do is I can tap on satellite here. And when I tap on satellite, I can zoom into this location. And let's go ahead and close this panel out for a minute. And when I zoom into the location, I can see how the location is laid out. And I've actually used this charger before while towing my camper. And I actually pulled down one of these aisles and pulled up. But we can see there's quite a few chargers there and it is easy to get in and get out. The only downside to this charger is there's not really a whole lot around it. We do have a Burger King here. Looks like we have something over here. Looks like a church. We have a bank. We do have a Popeyes over here. And even further over here, we have a Firehouse Subs and another shopping center. So this is what I like to use PlugShare for. I like to see how reliable the charger is. And then when I get on the satellite here, I can see how accessible the area is. I can see what amenities are located around the charger, such as food, restrooms, and shopping. And from there, I can make a determination on whether or not I want to use that charger or whether I want to skip that charger and try a different charger. Okay, everyone, so that's going to wrap this one up. You have a lot of different options to plan your road trips. Again, links to all these things will be down in the video description. If you have any additional questions or if there's any things I didn't cover, let me know down in the comments section what you think. As always, folks, remember to like, subscribe, and then make sure you hit that notification bell and turn on all notifications so you don't miss out on any of our upcoming content. And thank you guys so much for watching.